Happy Sunday. I am listening to Good Vibes by Gnarl Beats on YouTube. I, I like their uh, channel. And I'm listening to Gamma Waves right now, which is... Gamma has always been really good upgrades for me when I listen to the beats. And um, I actually had a DMT trip without using DMT, and I was listening to Gamma Rays, so it's pretty neat. So... The other morning, in the shower, I get a lot of ideas for videos, and I take a shower first thing in the morning, and it really, like, gets me in my mind right. It's real cool, and it brought up the subject of death and suicide and things like that, and today, this morning, uh, I had the same thoughts in my mind while I was in the shower, and it was like, go make a video. So, I just want to share my thoughts on death and suicide, which is just a transference of energy. And, you know, I, death is an interesting thing. And we don't realize what death is until we look at it from the outside perception of our own programmed humanistic perceptions. When we start to understand energy, energy, we start to understand everything, and that includes what humans call death. I dealt with, I've dealt with a lot of death, a lot of suicide in my life. When I was younger, when I was in middle school, uh, Michael Chavez was the first person that I knew to commit suicide. He was my school crush and a great friend. And so over the years, I've dealt with a lot of those things, as a lot of us have, and um, you know, as I have grown to see death in its authenticity and understand it physically and mentally as much as I possibly can in this human experience, um, I'm channeled a lot of thoughts about it. And the way that I see suicide in particular is very interesting now, the way that I view it. And the way that I view suicide is this. <clears throat> If we step outside of the box of the tragic way that we view suicide and we take a look at the energy, the thought processes it takes for someone to choose to remove themselves from this realm is something that is of power. I mean, think about it. Like, it takes a lot of guts to do that. That's why it's so traumatic to the living humans when that happens. And we don't see past it, just like death. Like when someone dies in a car accident from a gun shooting or whatever, we get stuck in that emotional slam to the subconscious that we're not able to step outside of the spectrum of what it is to see it. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I think about suicide and I think about the courage that it takes to be at peace because you have to be at peace with death on some spectrum to take your own life from a living experience. I mean, if you really think about it, it's really fascinating and it doesn't happen just for no reason. Like people think because there's usually some tragic scenario wrapped around suicide that People get stuck in that spectrum instead of realizing that that person's calling was of something else. The situation that caused that person to hear the thoughts of suicide, that's on an outside spectrum, but it plays into the mission of that human's existence. Therefore, it's within alignment and it's meant to be because everything is programmed the way it's supposed to go. And so it's very interesting that to me, I see it as a soul mission. I see it as someone's purpose needing to be somewhere else. I've read the suicide notes of some of the people that I've known that have chose to cross over. And I've been blown away. The last suicide note that I read from someone that I, I didn't know, but it was actually my ex-boyfriend's brother. I was floored 
at the sense of peace I felt reading the energy of that person writing that note. Because just like anything else, I can read the energy of someone just by talking to them or, or not even seeing them. I can read the energy of the words in a note or whatever. So in that note, this person was so nonchalant and a matter of fact, and they were just like, and they were young. They were 14 years old. And it sounded like the most wise wisdom I had ever read about death. It was so secure and just a declaration of not feeling like they belonged here. And they were at peace with leaving this realm at the age of 14 years old. And I read this note a couple of years ago. And so that note in itself got me to then sit with that feeling and let my mind show me what it meant. And so, you know, that offered me a lot of peace about death. It offered me a lot of peace about suicide. It offered me a lot of peace about natural disasters and things that occur where say, you know, mass amounts of people transition over to the other side. And I know in my heart that all of those things happen for a reason of evolution. It's the regeneration, the cycle of life. And when we as humans step into the spectrum of death and embrace it and not run from it, from the fear of the unknown in our minds, we actually gain more peace in this living experience because we're not dead yet. And so in my process, I had to be shown in my mind, you know, it's hard to describe the way that we are shown things in our life. And, you know, there's no textbook for these things. Everything in my life that I've seen has lined me up for the things that I talk about now. Like I don't have degrees. I didn't go to these universities to learn any of this stuff. Life and photo, like like automatic, like that uh, photographic memory, I call it. So I've had almost 39 years of seeing things the way that my mind is programmed to process things from my life's mission, which is now. And so, you know, we're. I think I think it really the number one meaning of this topic goes across the board for the entire human existence is to step outside of the human spectrum of the way we've always thought about things to see the way that we've heard things because the human knows what's going on all it has to do is go you know I ought to just like put move all of this social thought processes to the side and step in to the spectrum of whatever fear you feel because fear is a tool of transcendence so that we can embrace our true nature, our divine selves. And so when we understand that tragedy is really only a human perception, we can break away from the attachment to something that is really beautiful. Death is not tragedy in my eyes anymore. Death is the beautiful cycle of recreation. And for me, even though I have this am amazing peace in my heart and in my mind whenever it comes to death, that doesn't mean that I don't still fear it occasionally. Because new things will come up, old things will come up, and it's just a tool for us to check ourselves. Like... A lot, sometimes death thoughts or experiences come into my mind just to, for me to check myself to see if I still feel secure in my feelings. And one of the things that I've had happen to me in my mind as a mental coping me mechanism in my life, all of a sudden I I'll have this like supreme fear and I'll picture myself falling off of a cliff or off of a building and it's such an extreme measure of fear. It chokes me. It has. And I knew that that was a humanistic way of 
dealing with the emotions I was having. And so what I do now is I check myself, well, I say I, my channel will check my human to see how I feel about death. And it'll ask me to put myself in that situation. So what I'll do is I, I like to play games with my own mind. I have to reprogram this thing. So what I do is I imagine myself falling off of a cliff and falling off of a building. I push myself to get uncomfortable. And then what I do is I imagine myself flying and being at peace because I remember that when I die, I won't know that I've left this realm. No human does. No human does. And so when we recognize that we don't know that we've left this realm when we do, only the humans left to mourn our passing, that brings great peace. Or at least that's what my channel has shown me to give me peace. <laughs> And so I share that with you because it is a reality, you know, and yes, some, uh, what if this were the afterlife? Yeah, exactly. Death can be whatever you feel it is. For me, I have not reincarnated. Like this is my first time here. I don't have any pulls to any reincarnated anything or anything like that. And I know a lot of people do. And so really, it's just about what you feel. And sure, so this is the afterlife for some people, for some reincarnated souls, and then for some it's not. And so when we get out of the spectrum of fearing something, we can embrace it. And yes, male, heaven and hell are states of the mind, higher and lower planes, because it really has and thought process it's not a place it's a state of being and so when we recognize that we can transcend and embrace the hell to find the light within the darkness that we have always been shown we're able to create our own reality and tap into the true vibration of creation which is a higher thought process it's a higher way of living and evolving and communicating with others and so in this life we must embrace death so that we can transcend that attachment to learn to live. So the entity agrees. <laughs> so on this Sunday, one of my favorite days, it's always been my favorite day, it's a day of rest, mind, rest, no matter what you're doing, you know, we can rest our mind anywhere, so just embrace the day of rebirth as being the transcendence of things that don't make you happy to evolve to a restful place of the quiet within, because that's where we find our mastery, that's where we you know, embrace our majestic ways and our abilities. And we can just, it, really what we do is we practice a meditative state of mind so that we can tap back into that whenever we need it, because that's heaven, right? That's the highest vibration, and which is love, or really which is silence, and that's where we find love. Like, death is a place of awareness without the humanistic emotions tapped attached to it it's just a place of being not feeling anything not remembering anything just being present in this moment and that's how we connect to the other side of the veil because that's that's our true reality yes the divine sacred union that's exactly right I hope you all have a wonderful day and thanks so much for always tuning in and hanging out with me and, and communicating with others because it's really great to come together in a world that can feel painful and it's really not. We just have to choose where to put our energy. I love you to the moon family.